I'm going to talk about professional responsibility. Now, we tend to think that if we build an organization from, uh, when we staff it with people that are experts at what they do, and give each of those experts to be responsible for the thing it does best, then we'll have an organization that will succeed and evolve and might be the next Apple or Google. I'm going to challenge that view. And I am actually going to claim that doing that will make an organization stop and not function. And actually, you won't, it's not an organization you won't be able to change. Now, why is change important? We talked about innovation. What is innovation? Innovation in an organization is the ability to think about new ideas and change with them. Change the way we think, change what we do. If an organization cannot change, we have a problem. Now, we at Wix, we went through a number of transformations in the way we work through in the company. And we started with the traditional model. We assigned responsibility based on the expertise of people. That's the obvious way to assign responsibility to people. And we got to a position that that didn't work anymore. And we changed that model. Now, before actually I'm going to introduce what we're doing today, I want to explain what is the problem with that so obvious way of uh, distributing responsibility between people. So we can take the example, you know, we're a software company. So I'll take the example of developers and operations. Now, everyone heard about developers, those, those guys who learned the computer science and earn those huge salaries. And those are the people who actually go and build software. They write things like Google or Facebook or the software of your phones. They uh, are expected to innovate and create new things and basically change and evolve and learn new stuff. Operations is another group that we don't hear about so much, but they are the people who make things work. They are the people who normally are responsible to make sure that Google works that when you go to google.com and you search for something, it would work always, regardless of what's happening in the world. It doesn't matter if there's a cable cut, or there is a problem, or a software failure, or a hardware failure, or a fire somewhere. They make things work all the time. Just think about it. What would happen, how would you feel if Facebook would lose your profile one day? Operations are people that prevent that. Now, Normally, they have things like a knock, which is network information, network, uh, actually, the name, that's not really important, but it is that huge room that we see in the NASA movies. You know that room that we have a lot of engineers sitting in front of tons of monitors, monitoring how the spaceship is making its way to the moon, and then someone comes and says, NASA, uh, Houston, we have a problem. That room that you see there, that's what we call a knock in software, and we have those rooms in a lot of large companies. All the telecom companies have those rooms. Google has one. Facebook has one. Netflix has. Actually, Netflix doesn't. They work in a different model. But a lot, of, a lot of the companies have them. And this is just one of the functions that this group, Operations, is doing. Now, the normal way of working is that developers build their software. They build the products. They get ideas and requirements from very innovative people, from designers, and they build stuff and then they hand it over to the operation people to install it and make it run. That's the normal model, because developers are experts at building it, and operations are the experts at making it run. So everything sounds great up until that point. But there is one small glitch here. Have you heard about the saying that in theory, theory and practice are the same, but in practice they're not? So the developers, they build software but they're not really running it. So in theory, they build the right thing. They build something that can run. But the people who operate it, they see the practice. And that's a bit different. So attention starts to build up between those two groups. Developers are measured by change, by what they throw into the system. Operations are measured by stability, but by not having change. Because every change is a risk for operations, they would create procedure and tools to mitigate that risk. They would have ways that when the developers give them a software to check it and validate it and learn it, learn how to operate it, before they would actually go and install it and make it run. That translates to delays and procedures and bureaucracy, which hinders change. 
So operations start to appear as the people who are against innovation in the company. They'll become a blocker, they become a problem. Developers, of course, don't like it. That amounts at the end to a situation where people don't own what they're doing, just say things like, it works on my computer. Happens all the time. Or, it's not a bug, it's a feature. All kinds of saying like that. And there is a notion that between five years, a software company working in that model basically stops. There is actually a very famous in the computer industry guy that is the one they call after five years to save, the comp save companies. So that obviously doesn't work. So what are we doing in the software industry to mitigate that? There's something called DevOps. DevOps is a different way of thinking. Basically, it's a different way of assigning responsibility. We make the developer responsible for the operational aspects of his software. The developer starts to be responsible for operating what he's doing. Just to give you a small example of how it looks like, one of the things we've done at Wix, we've taken monitors, basically TVs, and put them in the developer rooms. And we gave the developers metrics, feedback back from how their, their software runs. One of the developers in one of our key services looked at that monitor, at one of our key things, you know, Wix websites, basically what we're doing is hosting a lot of websites. So there's a lot of requests to get to view a website. And that was that request, that most important request. And he was looking at the monitors, looking at the numbers, and they were too high. It was a number 40. And he was like, that shouldn't be 40. That's way too high. Within two weeks, it went down to 20. A week later, it went down to 10. No one asked him anything. No one told him to change that or to fix it. And on the way, he fixed so many other problems that we're not even aware of, simply because we gave him the responsibility. With the responsibility, we gave them the freedom to make the decisions and to get the data. Now, you have to ask then, so we've shifted the responsibility on the operations from the operations team to the developers. What the operations team does now? What is their job? Well, they're enablers. What they're doing is building the tools and infrastructure that enables the developers to get that responsibility. Those graphs that that developer have seen come from work that the operations team have done. They're now focusing on other stuff, which they never had time to do before. You know that there are all kinds of bad people in the world that try to, in to get into data centers and attack them, steal information, or just, you know, just the fact to be able to cope with a data center going down. You know, we're kind of always thinking, Google never goes down. Well, in fact, it does. And both and all, all other companies do go down, simply that there are good people in their operation teams that know how to mitigate that. So that is what the operation team does. They're enabling developers to work by building the right tools and right infrastructure. But that introduces another problem. What if developers want something that operations doesn't provide? In the old world, before we've done that change, developers there were two, two, two kinds of companies that worked. There were one kind of company that developers would build something, throw it over the fence for operations, and tell them, go and install it, make it work. And operations didn't have any say about what that thing is. There are other companies at which the operations team say, you're going to work only in this way, and you developers have no say in that. That's the way you work. Both ways aren't really nice. What we're doing today is actually we give developers three options. Operations are going to give you something that they know to support. Some call it a stack or some kind of base that, you, that they can work with. And you as a developer have three options. You can either use it and work within what is supported, or go to operations and convince them that you need something more and they should support some other option, or go, some, go and do something totally different yourself. But if you do that, you take full responsibility. You don't talk with operations team. You can't go and make a decision that you're responsible for and then have someone else live with the consequences. It's your decision, it's your, you have to do that and take responsibility and take the implications to the end. And there are companies that do that much more extreme than we do at Wix. We actually, we've done the change something like five, four years ago and it was very successful for us. But that made me think, does that concept of Shifting the responsibility applies just for developers and operations. 
Maybe it's a more generic thing. Maybe it applies for other aspects of a company. So I've been involved with quite, quite a few uh, startups. I myself started working in the first startup 15 years ago. Well, 15 years ago. And <laughs> been involved with a few that failed, been involved with a few that, su that succeeded, Wix, of course. What I see in all of startups is that when a, when a company starts, when an organization starts, you normally have some like four, three, two people, the founders, maybe another friend, and they can work really fast. They can evolve. They can change. They any decision they want to make, they can make it instantly and just cope with it. Within a few years, you can't make any changes. Simply, any change that you want to do, it Everything resists that. So what happens in between? What happens in between is that we are responsible people. We might take a quality assurance person to be responsible for the quality assurance of our product. We might bring a finance person to be responsible for the money we spend. We might take a designer to be responsible for the designs we're doing. Or whatever other function out there. Might be things like billing, might be things like well, who knows what, even for the text, just the language that we're using in our, in our website. But then any change or any project we're trying to do, we have to go through each and every one of those people, of those responsible people, and get their help and their part in that project. So instead of doing a project if I, when we were just three people, and we would sit together in one room and just make a change, Anytime we want to do a change two years down the line, we have to go and talk to 20 people or 200 people, depending on which company. It's a lot of work to do to go and talk to so many people. And what if some of them are not available? What if they're overloaded because they're doing other stuff? What if they're on vacation? What if two functions disagree? One tells you to do this thing and another tells you to do that thing. Who makes the final decision? Now, you might think that that is only a problem for software companies, but just think about things from the very known world. If we want to build a house, how many people do need to go and sign off during the stages of building a house? It's exactly the same problem. We have responsible people who are trying to do their best job there. If we want to do a reform in the government, how most reforms don't happen not because the government didn't make a decision, they did make a decision. But when it goes down to all of the people responsible and they're trying to sort out the implications and have everyone talk and coordinate, it doesn't work in a huge organization. So I don't know how to solve the problem with the government. But I do know what to do about companies, made to large companies. And what we've done is shift from a model of <coughs> splitting responsibility by area of expertise to shifting that to owners and enablers. Instead of having a lot of people responsible for different functions, now we have one person, exactly one person, that is responsible for doing a change. And that one person that is responsible to do a change can, make, can have the final say in all aspects of that change and use the enablers, the experts, to do a very good job. Now, there are a few areas where it's more difficult, especially around finance and law. You can't go and do something illegal because you haven't consulted with a lawyer. But in most of other functions, it's totally fine. And it's allowed to make mistakes. And it's allowed to make decisions that are different from the company standard in that regard, if you take ownership of that change of what you're doing. And the key point here is that when you give the responsibility and the tools for the guy who owns a change, the guys who own an idea, you can innovate, you can move fast, and you would do mistakes during the way, but at least you will be able to do stuff. <coughs> when you need for any change to go through a lot of people, you just don't move at all. So we've changed Wix today to work in a very similar model to that, where for any change, any group, there is one decision-making person, and in any regard, that person can either go with the company, 
support with different aspects that the company provides or not if it takes the responsibility for it. And that works for us.